Let me give you the last one that I saw out of print out of uh, Genesis chapter 24 that we can get from. All right. Now, look at verse. Uh, we're going to we read verse 12 to verse 15. But the thing that I want to bring out of this is that that this servant allowed God to direct their path. Now, look, let's look at back at the scripture. Let me show you this, because this is very powerful. Look after he prayed. Let's look at what happened in verse 15. Look at this. And it came to pass before he had done speaking. So he was praying, saying to God, Lord, um, do this, direct me to the right person. And look what happened in verse 15. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold, Rebecca came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother. <laughs> wow with her picture upon her shoulder. Now look at verse 16, y'all. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, meaning she looked good. She was beautiful. <laughs> and she was a virgin. Neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. Wow. 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 So with them, because he applied the Proverbs 3 principle, when he was uttering these words, Lord, you know who is best for me. The scripture says that immediately the one whom God appointed, y'all saw the scripture earlier, for some reason, that girl had a desire at that moment, at that hour, at that minute to go to the well. She could have went to the well three hours earlier and missed her blessing. She could have went to the well the next day, but something in her spirit says, I feel like I need to go to the well. I e let me let me bring it to my story. So um in twenty in twenty uh sixteen, I'm sorry, twenty fifteen, I get a call to go on a mission trip. And when I get this call to go on a mission trip, I never been to the Dominican Republic. And um when the person told me about it, they was like, Yeah, we would love you to come and be a part. And I was like, I I don't you know, okay, let me pray about it. So I prayed about it first. I said, I can't because I had a busy schedule, Billy cat uh, busy calendar around that time of the year in March. And I said, pretty much, uh, I'm not going to go. Didn't think nothing of it for a couple of months. And guess what? One day in prayer, the Holy Spirit says, I want you to go on this trip, pick up the phone and call and say that you will accept their offer. So I called them and said, listen, I will accept your offer. I will go and, you know, and serve as you need me to. So they was like, great, wonderful. You're going to love it. And I'm Googling um, the Dominican Republic. I'm like, it's a Spanish speaking country. I don't know Spanish. I'm like, this, this can't be from God. Now watch this. When the Holy Spirit told me to go, the Holy Spirit knew on that weekend, I need to be meeting another person. Now watch this. Fast forward to the day of the mission trip, March 11th, 2016. We'll never forget that day. March 11th, 2016, I arrived there and I'm saying to myself, I'm completely there on purpose. I'm focusing on the, the, the ministry. I'm not even focusing on relationship or anything. I'm there to focus. Nobody know who Nathan Salter is. I am just completely a nobody over there. I'm just walking around looking for, um, waiting for assistance from people. On the second day, the guy, the, the lead guy of the trip said to me, um, uh, Mr. Salter, I would like you to go with me. Um, and you know, this group was from, um, out of Texas and he says, I want you to go with me. And the, um, the students are going to go, they're going to be going all around the country, but I would like you to go with me. So I go with this guy. He takes me and we go to about five churches and we meet all the pastors that we're going to be ministering to in Dominican. So why we are there ministering all the, every church we went to the door, the pastor was there, the door was open, blah, blah, blah. Then we get to church number six. And when we get to church number six, the door was locked. We almost, uh, we were, we pretty much thought that we couldn't meet the pastor. So we were there about 20 minutes knocking on the door. Nobody would let us in. On our way out, somebody opened the door and says, Oh, I'm sorry. We almost missed you. Come out down, but come back up. We walk up the stairs. They lead us into the back. We're on the top of the roof of a church. I mean, there was absolutely, you cannot, you can't calculate this and you can't make this stuff up. I'm on the back of the roof in that country I've never been at. And I'm standing, I walk past all the people. I'm standing in the back and guess what? I am standing back there and I am just watching and I'm looking around and I look up to heaven. I was like, wow, Lord, this is amazing. So I'm getting ready to write some notes. And, and, and in two seconds, a young lady walked up to me and say, hello. I turned around and it was my wife. Now, let me tell you this. Let me show you this. Now, this is the other part of the story. This is all connected to principle number five. 
when she turned, I, I'm like, I didn't see her when I walked by. Guess what? She was hidden in the kitchen at the moment that I walked past, because if I would have walked past when I saw her, it would have took my attention off. And you know, you know how that thing worked. So God was like, you know what? I'm going to hit you. I'm going to set you up so well because of your obedience of coming to the well. So I stand back there and she comes out of the kitchen, didn't even saw her. She tapped, she was like, hey, hi. And I'm like, hi. And that's how we met. So she's speaking in English. So I'm like, oh, wow, there's somebody here who's speaking English. So we start talking, come to find out she was my interpreter the whole week. And that's that was how the whole story happened. Now, watch this. This is the part that you I want to give you uh, give you before uh, we wind down is that she wasn't going to go that morning. She that was a Saturday morning and she was tired and she said, I was at church all week. This this Saturday, I'm not going. And guess what? One of her friends said, hey, we need extra interpreters at the church in the morning. Can you be one of them? And she said, I don't feel like it. But she said, but something in her said, you should come. And guess what? She came at the right day, at the right minute, at the right time that me and the guy who had me go with him got there at the right minute, at the right second, at the right time. So here in a country that I never been at God, the timing was so perfect that we couldn't miss each other. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Y'all making me excited. I'm trying to be good here. So what I'm trying to show you is that this, this servant shows us, this story shows us that the moment the servant prayed, God was already working out the details. So if you are, if you are in a place and you're saying to yourself, you know, I would, I, you know, I'm, I, I really would like to get married and I, and I'm going to wait on God. Trust me, God, God got this person. Things are moving. You just don't see it. And it happened. I can tell you at that moment when, when, when she tapped my shoulders in that moment, I was not thinking one thing about a woman. My mind was so on the awe of God that when she tapped me, it actually startled me. So what I'm saying is that in the moment that I met her, I wasn't even thinking about it. So because and so that's what the scripture says: He who find a wife find a good thing. So it means that I found her, but I wasn't looking for. Her. I found her. Found mean you wasn't looking for. Her. You were just walking and oh, I just found the dollar. You didn't wake up in the morning searching for the dollar. You were on your way to your purpose, and you happened to see the dollar laying there, and you said, "Oh, look what I found." That's what happened with my wife. And that's what can happen to you. So I'm seeing people over and over get blessed because they're starting to acknowledge God in their dating process. And again, if you're somebody who do, who's not um, looking to date, that's fine. You can have the best relationship. I tell people all the time, singleness is a blessing. I don't care what nobody say. It is a blessing because you get to you get to serve God. Like the scripture said, Paul said, I wish you were as me. So if you're a person who don't even want to be married, guess what? You are you are in a good season. Don't let people tell you, oh man, singleness is a mess. No, it ain't. It's only like that for people who don't know their purpose. If you know your purpose, singleness can be the greatest joy. I mean, you get to travel. You get to do what God called you to do. Nobody, you don't have to go home and cook dinner for nobody. You don't got to do it. You get to just be free to do what God called you to do. So listen, these are the five principles that I want to leave with you. I'm going to put them, I'm going to share them one more time. And I pray that this I spoke to you. So look at this. And the first one was, it was very clear on, on the type of people you shouldn't pick from. Number two was, you have to understand that people do have choices. Number three is you got to know where the potentials are. You got to know where the well is. Okay. Number four is acknowledge God in your selection. And number five, you got to allow God to direct the path. All right. Now I got to give you this before I wind down because this was the game changer. This should, this should let you know that when that certain, certain things God just done have done before you've even gotten born. I mean, there's some things that is happening in your life that there's people that there's friends, there's places that God needs you to be at certain times and moments. I'm a firm believer of that. And there is some, things that I believe that happens because of purpose. And I am a firm believer that you should marry for purpose, not pleasure. I'm a firm believer that if you and this person have the same purpose, if you guys are going to, when I say the same purpose, you both have the, uh, you're both unique, but you both have the same goal. You both have something that you both will share together. This is what I mean. You want to have that. So now watch this. Let me show you something that's going to blow your mind because a lot of people probably haven't seen this in the scripture, but I need to leave you with this because this is a game changer for those of you who don't believe that God wants to be involved, that he's 
sometimes already have somebody for you that he would love for you to connect with again, but that, but it's decisions, it's choices. All right. So let me bring you now to a scripture that really is going to blow your mind. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 24 and I want to just read uh, um, two scriptures to you in verse 59 and verse 60. Now I want you guys to look at this. Watch this. So let me find my scripture here. Now look what it says in verse 59. This is, this is going to blow your mind. All right. So right here in 59 and 60, it says, um, this is now after, um, Rebecca has, um, met the servant. They already talked. Now look at what, uh, the family says. This is where, um, the servant meets Rebecca's family. And when Rebecca's family sensed that this was from the Lord, look at what they say and look at what they pray over Rebecca. It says in verse 59, and they sent away Rebecca, their sister. That means her family and her nurse and Abraham's servant and his men. So they, they allowed Rebecca to leave because they believe that this was from the Lord. I'll look at what they say in verse 60. And they blessed Rebecca and said unto her, thou art our sister. Be thou the mother of thousands of millions. Now I need everybody to look at this, what we're about to read and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. Now I'm going to read that again because I'm about to show you something. It says in verse 60, and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. Now these are Rebecca's brothers saying this. Okay. Now the only, the, the only thing about this is that they don't really know much about, um, Isaac. You know, they, they, there's some connection there with family, but they, it's like, okay, but you see how they prayed a blessing over her about that her seed, the children that will come, the child that will come from her, that he will possess the gates of the enemy. Now that's key. Now let's go to the chapter, to another chapter. And let me show you the same type of word or prophecy over the husband. So we saw the, we saw the prophecy over the wife. That was Rebecca. We clearly saw that they said, let the, let her seed possess the gates. Now look at what is said over the husband and, and look at the, how the purpose is matched. So let's go to Genesis chapter 22 and we're going to go to verse, we're going to go to chapter 22 and we're going to go to verse 18. So let me bring you over here to, uh, Genesis 22 and verse, uh, 18. And I believe that you guys are going to tremendously be blessed by this. And it reads this. Okay. I got it here. All right. Look at this guys. It says, um, in verse 17, this is just Genesis 22. This is after Abraham was about to offer Isaac. Okay. <laughs> Abraham passed the test and look at what God says to Abraham. Verse 17 that in blessing, I will bless thee in multiplying. I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand, which is upon the seashore and watch this and thy seed <laughs> shall possess the gates of his enemies. I'm going to read that again. And thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. So here he gets an assignment. Isaac has an assignment by God that he is going to possess the gates of his enemies. Now you can see why Abraham was so picky about who was going to marry my son. Because once you have purpose in your life, you can't marry everybody. <laughs> you can't marry everybody if you got purpose over your life. You're going to have to let God get involved. And so that's why Abraham was like, listen, this, this, this promise that's over my son, she definitely ain't in the clubs. She definitely ain't in the strip joint and she definitely ain't in the bars. She definitely ain't on, uh, uh, at the parties and us. She is not there based on what I know this, this, uh, purpose that's over my son. He says, listen, I'm so clear because of his purpose that he cannot marry any of the daughters from the Canaanites. So he's like, now I need you to go somewhere close by near my relatives. And we're talking about the body of Christ. Now go somewhere with people who love the Lord. And he says, and it's gotta be, she's in this group. 
And that servant had enough wisdom to know the whales to go to, to find these type of women. And then he, once they found her, then she brings the servant back to her house. And you can read Genesis 24 and the family all senses it. So what am I saying is that there's confirmation all around these two, that these two need to be together. All right. So the funny thing about uh, this story, it was that the moment that they confirmed that this woman is Rebecca, our sister, who we love, who has lived with us. Guess what? We're going to release her because we know that this is from the Lord. We are, we got her blessings. And guys, I tell you, I get excited about the story because this is what happened when I met my wife's family. For the first time, my wife's dad, he don't play. He don't like, he didn't like a lot. My wife told me every time someone, somebody was interested, he was like, nope, 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 nope. The moment he met me, the, my, my, my dad, my father-in-law don't even speak English, y'all. He know I, I, I walked up in the house and he said, yes. That's him. The mother don't speak English. And guess what? As soon as she saw me, she said, yes. The pastor don't speak English. Her pastor did not speak, don't speak English. And the moment her and, and the first lady, somebody they said, yes. Everyone in her community was like, that is your, that's the man. And because they sensed the purpose that was in her and the purpose that was in me. And they was like, yeah, this is, this is definitely from the Lord. So when we got together, there was, it wasn't just me and her knowing it. It was a, it was confirmation. So here, the reason why I gave y'all that last, that scripture is because sometimes people in the dating world, especially in this day, we are not putting God in our dating. We are completely going in this thing by ourselves, and you have you have the ability to do that. You have you can choose to do that. I wouldn't do it because again, we are in the last days, and the, and Second Timothy tells you the characteristics of how the behaviors and the culture of people's mindset in the last days. And I don't want you to keep making the same mistake. If, if you could just say, Lord, I'm I'm getting older. Um, I I I I've tried to date, and it's just not working. Can you, Lord, you know who's good for me. I'm just going to let you direct my path and give me an ear to hear you. If you tell me to go to this event, I don't know that person's going to be there, but I'm going to go because you told me to go. I went on that mission trip, not looking for a wife. I went on a mission trip because he told me to go. I'm, my wife did not go to church that morning when she met me because she was looking for a husband. She went because she went to do her purpose, which was to help interpret. So I hear, I hope you guys see that this thing got to be bigger than I'm going to go places just to find a mate. I mean, you want to be around the well, but don't go with this mindset of, I need somebody. I need somebody. You got to get to the place where you're like, Lord, if you don't bless me, if, if I don't find somebody, I'm good. Now I know people don't like to hear it, but in this day, again, you want to be, you rather be single and happy than to be married and miserable. Okay. So listen, I pray that you guys are completely blessed by this. I pray that I spoke to somebody. I pray that I've given you guys some tools. Please read Genesis 25. If you are single and, and you need some hope and encouragement about how God get involved, read Genesis 24. It will give you that. All right. I hope those five principles bless you. And I Thank you again for allowing me on this Saturday to be able to connect with each and every one of you. I love you much. And I just pray blessings for each and every one of you. I thank God for you so much in Jesus name. Amen.